All right, so my name is Ann Alton, if anybody doesn't know that by now. Um, I'm a physical therapist here at Illinois Regional Pain Institute. And um, I'm going to do my standard disclaimer, which is hush up, you two. And she didn't have a piece of paper. Disclaimer <laughs> <laughs> is I, I am not a, a dietitian, I am not um, a nutritionist. Uh, certainly don't have any formal training in some of the metabolic stuff that we're talking about today. Um, this is just primarily some stuff that I've come across that is really interesting. Okay, and it has, um, I think, a lot of validity, especially for folks that have chronic pain. And I'm wondering is if we don't have a higher incidence in, of this issue in folks with chronic pain, and that's why we have chronic issues. Okay. Um, so uh, first of all, this is this is about neuroimmune disorders, okay? And that sounds uh, very complicated. Basically, it's a disorder that affects both the immune system and the neurological system. And we're finding out this is more uh, more than we thought because both it, both systems are very very closely related, and we're finding out how closely th that they work together now, um, more so than than we have known before. Uh, one of the things that I just got sent an article from my sister about how when we are sick, when we have a contagious illness, our immune system actually puts out a chemical in our brain that makes us less likely to be social. Okay, so interestingly enough, the immune system is telling us we need to not be as social so that we don't spread this disease. Okay, so it's, it's kind of the two work together very, very closely. Um, and they also have some similarities in terms of the of the molecules and the structures um, in the cells it's themselves. They have some similarities there. Okay, so a neuroimmune disorder is anything that affects both these system, systems. And you can put migraines, headaches, vertigo, dizziness, chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, uh, neuralgias, neuropathies, Meniere's disease, adult ADD, um, depression, bipolar, autoimmune diseases like. Rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, uh, multiple sclerosis, Guillain-Barre, um, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or Lou Gehrig's disease, um, and Alzheimer's and other dementias can fall into all of these. Um, in addition, uh, they're finding some issues with autism, Asperger's, and and you know with younger children. Okay. All right, so that's what a neuroimmune disorder, that's how we're defining that for this, for, for this discussion. Okay, so then we talk about folates. Folate is a term like the word vehicle, okay? So it can encompass, 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 thank you. Um, it can encompass a whole range of different types of vehicles, okay? So folates, there's like hundreds of them. All right, so um, anyway, the, the, the methylfolates is the active form that we want in our bodies, and, and that does a whole host of activities, and we'll, we'll go more through more of those later in a little bit more depth. Um, folic acid is the form of the folate that you most often get in supplements, okay, uh, and nutritional products. And the problem with getting folic acid um, is that uh, probably about 40 to 60 percent of people in the United States don't have or have a gene that makes it difficult for them to convert the folic acid into the, con the form that we want, which is methylfolate. Okay, so it's like giving your body a paper or a piece of paper and saying you need a paper airplane, but not teaching your body how to make a paper airplane. So it's just not going to get done very well. Okay. So um, you need to have the paper airplane form for it to actually do the job that it needs to do. All right, so that's that's the the chemicals. So we're talking some of the chemicals. Um, B cells and T cells. B cells are uh, an immune cell. It's a type of lymphocyte that's uh, primarily involved in making antibodies. T cells help take care of your immune function once something gets into a cell. So it decides whether or not a cell is going to live or not. Okay. Um, okay. Glutathione and SAMe and CoQ10, they're all antioxidants and basically um, waste product, they take care of the waste products that your body makes when it does its work. Okay. In, in a nutshell. 
Um, methylation is the process by which we get what, folate into the methyl folate and a whole bunch of other issues, okay, a whole bunch of other stuff, and we'll go through that. Um, but basically, it makes things that were water-soluble into fat-soluble, okay? So if you've ever tried to mix um, water and vinegar, or, or water and oil, um, or vinegar and oil, you know, they, they don't mix up very well, okay? Um, this makes the, the water a little bit more mixable um, in the, the oils, okay, in the, the fats that are in your body. Okay. So that's just kind of some background stuff, and I apologize um, if anybody has questions, please feel free to ask and pipe up, but um, this is a really, really weighty topic, and so I tried to simple it up a lot. Um, that said, I'm probably missing some nuances, and some things may not be quite as accurate as I would hope that they, them to be, okay? Um, so I hope I did okay with that. Yeah. Is yes. this a new uh, topic of conversation in the literature? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I, I new as far as, well, at least in the last five years, I think. Okay. They, they may have been aware of it beforehand, but I think they're finally, because of the, the, the this is so closely linked to your genetics um, and the epigenetics, mm -hmm. that um, I think that they're really kind of starting to understand how it di it's different in different people. Um, quick note on that. Genetics, the genes that you have, um, are, is there, are, are set, um, but the epigenetics is whether or not something gets turned on or off, okay, and that's based on uh, life experiences and what, what your body needs, okay. Um, so you, so what, what happens with this is that we have a triggering event, okay. This can be any trauma or illness. It can be a surgery, it can be um, a lifting injury, it can be uh, Lyme disease, it can be, um, and, and they've included vaccines in this. Um, and if you think about, you know, I know that this is whole, this was whole issue with the anti-vaxxer, you know, the whole, whether or not you should get your kids vaccinated. The thing I'm going to say about that for the purposes of this discussion is that you are, when you give 10 different vaccines at a time to a child, you are really stressing out their immune system. Okay, you're really stressing their systems. And if you, if they have this particular gene that may be enough to kick them into this epigenetic to turn this gene on that makes it difficult for them to then process the folates. Okay, if that makes sense. All right, I'm not saying don't vaccinate your kids. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying that we need to, I think, worry about how much we're stressing out our kids and look at maybe the schedule that we give the vaccines on, okay? I don't know. So again, this is a really weighty topic, so I'm not exactly sure on all of that, but if I were a parent and looking at vaccinating my children, I would look at the schedule, and I would say, can we do this more slowly or at different times so that my kid's not trying to fight off 10 different things all at once, all right? Um, so anything, you know, losing your job, this can kick it off, anything that's really highly stressful. So the body is going to mobilize to address that stressor. Your psycho psychological system is going to, res going to respond by perceiving any threats, assessing any damage, and planning responses. Okay. Uh, the neurological system, which is part of the psychological, you're going to your thoughts and feelings are nerve impulses. Okay. But it's also going to coordinate and process input from the body and and coordinate the responses by all the systems. Um, to mobilize against whatever threat it is. So if it's, a, if it's a virus or if it's an injury of some sort, your body's going to, to mobilize responses against this. All right, the immune system is going to mobilize repair crews. It's going to clean up damage. It's going to alert the brain to any new damage, um, the status of your repairs, all of that stuff. So the immune system is constantly in communication with your neurological system. Um, B cells are going to call, be called in to help with any infections, and T cells are going to help to decide if a cell stays or goes. Um, and all of this takes energy and methylation, okay? The process of those B vitamins changing into the methyl folate, okay? What happens is those, those are little messengers that take that methyl group and, and that's how this little methyl group is what 
does all the work. Okay, changes things from one thing to another. Okay, so that that being said, so we have all of this stuff that's happening after this trigger event. Um, so what happens is if your body doesn't know how to change this folic acid or any of the other folates into methylfolate, okay, it doesn't have enough of the methylfolate to do the work. Okay, and then what happens is you can run low on dopamine and serotonin. Um, now, dopamine is responsible for motivation, self-worth, hope, temper control, stress um, control, social interactions, compassion, and it's also known as the master neurotransmitter. It helps regulate all the rest of your neurotransmitters. Okay. Um, the dopamine also can help regulate bowel motility and hormones, so you may have issues with some of those issues, some, some of those areas. Um, the serotonin, um, that's C, I forgot to write it in, serotonin is your happy, relaxed, um, joyful, enthusiastic social connection and sleep hormone. Okay, And the sleep hormone comes in on number two because it gets changed by the methyl group into melatonin so that you can sleep. Okay. Um, so it goes back and forth, all right? Um, and we all know what happens if you don't sleep, right? Mm -hmm. Right? We've all been there, right? <laughs> okay. So um, number three, um, the third thing that, that can happen is that your T cells um, require methylation to be, to, to be formed, and they don't keep your B cells in check. So. Um, when your your T cells are, are low, your B cells tend to be higher. Okay, so they tend to kind of balance each other out. And if you don't have those T cells, your B cells are going to come way up. Um, and then what happens is you d number one, you don't fight off infection. Okay, and I for a while there thought that even though I felt lousy all every all day every day, um, but I didn't get sick. So I thought, well, I'm I'm good, right? Just turns out. That may just be that your immune system can't mobilize to fight off, okay? And so, and as I started getting healthier and started eating better and started working on some of these systems, all of a sudden I got sick, boom, 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 boom. I felt like I was missing work every other week because I got sick. Now, part of that may be just that you get kind of go through cycles where every, you know, seven or 10 years, whatever you start, you get sick again. And so you build up some immunity to the current issues. But I also think that I was kind of fighting off stuff that had been in my system for a while. Um, so I think that, you know, just if you don't get sick, it's not necessarily that your immune system is working well. It may, in fact, not getting sick ever is an indication that your immune system really isn't functioning. Okay. Um, That's scary. Yeah, it is, isn't it? That's like, that's super scary. Yeah. So the high B cells, this is what, um, the B cells are responsible for your antibodies. And so what ends up happening with high B cells is that we tend to see more allergies, um, more allergic reactions, more food sensitivities, and, and so forth, okay? Uh, and so I was listening to one of the podcasts um, that I was used to, to help teach myself all of this stuff. Um, and the guy said that, you know, if you've, if, anybody heard of like the all cat test or the leap test those are tests that you can get to see if you're sensitive to various food products or um, or you know what other allergies and he said you know honestly he said we, we tend to want to fix the methylation first otherwise you come back you're allergic to everything and there's nothing that you can eat because you have all of these food sensitivities so if we can get the methylation to work better get the B cells to come back down, the antibodies in your bloodstream to come down, you have less food allergies, you can find out which ones really bug you, cut those out and feel better. Okay, um, all right, so the, the food sensitivities and the allergies and the chemical sensitivities that a lot of people with fibromyalgia, chronic pain, um, they tend to complain of can be related to this, this B vitamin issue. Okay, so <coughs> the other thing that it does um, is that you it helps you to make myelin uh, for your nervous system, which I thought this was very interesting because the issue with Guillain-Barre, um, ALS, or 
myotrophic lateral sclerosis or Lou Gehrig's disease um, and multiple sclerosis are all issues with the uh, myelin sheath, which is the covering around all of your um, around your nerves. Okay, some of it just has to do with where the, the lesions are located. Um, and so, if you're not making these, if you're not making the myelin, and your body's attacking the myelin because there's a virus hidden there somewhere, or um, which is actually what they're thinking is happening now with autoimmune issues. They're thinking your body doesn't actually make a mistake. It's attacking cells that actually have virus hiding somewhere. So, um, any, at any rate, it's it's uh, so if you're if you're not making the myelin and your your body has issues with the myelin and so you're 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 getting rid of it, you start to have these lesions along the along the line, and so that may contribute to um, neuropathies like in your feet, in your hands. It may contribute to the MS and ALS and, and Guillain-Barre, okay? Um, may. I don't think that there's been a, a complete connection made there yet, but it makes sense to me. Sounds yeah. like about a 50-year fix. Like in 50 years, maybe there'll be a fix. Maybe. This yeah. sounds like... Yeah, maybe. This sounds like a lot of research, a lot of... It's huge. Of, oh, it's huge. This, it's just, um, it blew my mind when, yeah. when I started thinking about all of the systems that are affected and what a deficit in these, in these vitamins could cause. It's like, well, there's 95% of my symptoms anyway, you know. So, okay, so um, the other thing, one, another thing that it does is it helps to clear out heavy metals and other toxins. Okay, so um, if, has anybody had their homocysteine checked? For, um, for it's, it's one of those things where if you're high in homocysteine, they tell you that you're at a greater risk for uh, heart disease and also Alzheimer's. Um, and basically it is, um, did I not write it down? I probably didn't write it down. Um, it's, it's linked to um, the homocysteine, it's normal, it's natural form in your body. The usable form is meth, meth, uh, methio, methionine, methionine, something theonine. like that. Yes, say it, say it. Were we methotheonine? I something think so. Something like that. I think so. Close, close anyway, it's, I, th I thought I had it written down here, but I'm not seeing it. On. No, it is. It's, it's under 6A. Anyway, so it contributes oh, a methyl group. And then it turns into homocysteine. So basically, you can tell if your if your body is using methyl groups from other areas and not just your methyl folate by having a high homocysteine level. <coughs> okay. Um, is that the only lab that's indicates that? Uh, no, there are other ones, and I can that's I okay. think I, I wrote them down. I wondered if the C-reactive protein was in that. Um. Because that's the better lab for heart disease than homocysteine. True. Okay. Um, I don't. I don't know. Uh -huh. Huh? Are those home tests, or are they that you can buy, like at Walgreens, or that have to be done? I think it has to be done from a doctor. A doctor's you have to office. ask for it. But if you ask for it, they'll do it. But you have to kind of push to get it. Yeah. Okay. It's called the CRP. The other one is called CRP, C-reactive protein. And um, A lot of these tests you're going to have to ask for, um, and that, and and again, this is such is a new enough issue that um, not all medical professionals are are aware of or versed in some of this some of this I newer think they information. Know about it. They know about it. They just don't do it. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm talking about B vitamin, B vitamin levels, um, oh, D vitamin levels, and yeah. you know some of the MTHFR gene mutation no, checks and stuff like that. Yeah. That's I'm talking about so all of those, not just the two that you were okay. talking about. Yeah. Um, so again, again, you may have to push. You may have to ask. Um, I know that um, this would typically fall under the purview of a general practitioner but you probably get another doctor that sees you t to do that as well, um, you know, just for, for your information. Um, okay, so the, the heavy metals and toxins, so, so I know a lot of people um, will have 
uh, take medication to chelate, which it gets rid of some of the, the aluminums and the, the other heavy metals. Um, if you're constantly having to chelate, that's probably one of the things that's happening is your methyl groups are, are low. Okay. Um, so uh, this, you know, also includes in, in the toxins are like the histamines and other inflammation products. Okay, so if you can't clear out some of those inflammation products, you're, you kind of have a, a, a global inflammation level. Um, the final thing that it does, well, the final thing that I chose to pull out, because there are tons of things that these groups do, okay, hundreds of things that these groups do, um, is that you can run low on energy because the mitochondria in your cells um, are partially maintained and the work is done by the methyl groups. So mm. if uh, mitochondria is kind of like your, your battery in your cell, now your, your muscles have hundreds of the mitochondria in them. But if you have a child that has, um, you know, kind of low muscle tone, probably their mitochondria isn't working very well. Okay, and people will, re will talk about feeling weak and feeling like they just can't seem to recover from exercise or they can't seem to, to recover after any kind of activity or take some days to recover. Okay, so some of this may be part of what the problem is. The other thing to think about is that while your muscles have hundreds of mitochondria, your nerve cells only have about four or five. So what's gonna poop out first? Your nerve cells, okay? What happens when your nerve cells poop out? They fire and they get irritated and you get neuropathies, okay? Yes? The muscle loss in elderly, uh, is that also age-wise related? Can be. Can be. They're finding, um, I've seen a lot in the literature about mitochondria levels being part and parcel of muscle loss as, as you age. Uh, that the healthier your mitochondria is, the, the fitter you seem to stay. Hmm. Fitter, is that a word? Mm -hmm. Anyway, it is, um, it is now. Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay. Um, however, I don't, I don't know that they've made that 100% connection yet. Okay, um, but it does make sense. Okay, so how do you know if this is an issue for you? Um, one of the things that might happen is that your vitamin D levels might be low. They will check with this, especially if you're on Medicare, they will check this level probably more often now because Medicare has, there have been a, um, actually a, a, a lot of studies that indicate the higher your vitamin D levels are, the less likely you are to fall. Mm -hmm. Okay, And that has a lot to do with vitamin D being really important for um, muscle, muscles, bones, joints, nerves, all of those major major groups of things that keep you upright. Mm. All right. So um, the healthier those are, then the less likely you are to fall. So a lot of that will, you, you probably can get your doctor to do at least test your vitamin D levels. Um, there are many people out there I know who have chronic pain who take huge amounts of vitamin D and cannot keep that level up, cannot get it up where it's supposed to be. And to me, that tells me that your body either isn't absorbing it or your body is using it. And what your body uses vitamin D for is to help decrease inflammation. Okay, so if you have high B cells and high you know, inflammation from this methyl groups not happening, you're probably gonna call more resources for vitamin D to help take down the inflammation, okay? Um, you may have lots of inflammation. You may have a lot of, um, I, mean, I call it, you know, just not wanting to move. You feel stiff. You feel, um, and especially in the That's morning. Yes, and, yes, swelling, and especially in the morning. You feel that, like, you just can't hardly get out of bed feeling. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mentioned uh, our son is gene research, and yes. this is his topic. And when we compared the vitamin D level, he takes, and this is thousands so and so many milligrams a yeah. day, in the level my doctor and everybody is prescribing, mine was so low in the hundreds, very low hundreds, and he said it is necessary to keep 
keep it up very high. I don't have the numbers, but I was astonished. For years, I take such a low amount of vitamin D. And he said, no, it is absolutely necessary. And he is quite healthy, but he takes a high doses of uh, what they found out due to gene research, what yeah. is needed. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's it's um, it's amazing, and, and and I mean, we're talking, you know, the typical like I think the U.S. RDA is something like four hundred on right. you, right. um, and and I I know people who are taking fifty thousand oh IU well, yeah. once yeah. a week yeah. just yeah. to try to get it up. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and you know, for a while we, we were thinking, gosh, you know, why is everybody running low on vitamin D? Why are, why are we all well? Everybody's wearing sunscreen all the time now. Um, but I think that that's only part of it, because um, we do get it from from the sun. But I think that's only part of it. I think we have, especially in this country with the way we eat, I think we have a lot of inflammation. Um, we eat a lot of sugar. Yeah. Um, we eat a lot of really, really simple and processed carbs. And so I think that that, that brings up inflammation just in and of itself. And so I think that may be part of it. I, I, you know, again, a lot of these things, I'm making some leaps. So un please understand that I'm not, you know, I don't have a PhD in this stuff, although you probably could just in this topic alone. Um, the other thing that I thought was interesting was that craving sugar may be a sign that you are low in these methyl groups. The reason for that is because sugar is really readily able, you're really able to get it from tummy to bloodstream to cell. It's quick. It doesn't require any of these methyl groups to do it. Okay. However, stored energy and fats and proteins all require those methyl groups to convert them into energy, what you need. So if you're not, if you don't have those methyl groups to get those other sources of energy to where they need to go, you're going to crave sugar. So should we give that person sugar or? I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. If it was you, um, would you like it? Well, I, I, yeah, I would say that probably um, I would want them to cut back on the sugar and to get other carbs. The whole thing, and, and, and the last like three or four pages of your handout is all foods that will be beneficial to help with this cycle. Okay, um, and there's lots of them. Okay, so if we can, you know, change the diet and that to, to get it to come around full circle to where carbs. you are making those or getting those methyl groups so that you don't crave the sugar. Um, I think that is probably better. Okay, um, but I think that you know we 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 tend to to um, get down on ourselves. For craving sugar, and there may be actual biological reason why you are craving sugar. Well, they say your body craves what it needs, like iron, like a chocolate. You know, if you need more iron, and different right. things. Well, one of the, one of the, just let me interrupt. Sure. You know, one of the reasons people get hungry is they don't probably have enough protein, or they're not eating a balanced meal. If you don't eat a balanced meal with protein, a vegetable, you know, you can have bread, but you can't overeat those foods. Right. Then you're then you will not be as hungry right. when you don't eat enough protein. If you don't have protein in the morning, for instance, you're you're not going to feel energetic. You're you're not going to feel right. Yeah, and that has to do with the the whole insulin spike and then drop and then you know your cortisol trying to 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 get you to eat more. I mean, you know that has a lot to do with that the whole metabolic the insulin and, and blood sugars and all of that. I mean, it does definitely play into that, but I think we can get into a vicious, vicious cycle with it. I got another question. Is sure. this the uh, website here that you used, H-E-R Transitions? <coughs> it's yes. This is the website we can go to look this up? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, th there's a really, really long 29-page article oh, on okay. it, oh. um, which seemed to be pretty good, and it, it matched up with the other sources that I used. But I primarily just copied those pages because they have to do with the foods that are good for you to eat. Sure. Is this, is this in the theory process? This is a theory. It's not cast in concrete. The reason Correct. I say that is that I have a mother that her D3 hovered right around 30, which is where mine is. Uh huh. And she's still alive at 97. 
She never had one acre pain until recently. Mm -hmm. And now mine is the same D3 level, but I have all kinds of issues. But I'm just saying, right. I just wonder. Um, and that's only, I mean, like the, D, yeah. the D, D vitamin is really only one marker. Okay, and, and yeah, but there is one, one that's in the literature. It's one that's being mm -hmm. pushed on people. It's one that doctors are testing for, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, people are jumping on that bandwagon, which is okay. I'm not saying it's not okay. I'm just kind of trying to figure it out too. Right, and and it is. It this is this is very uh, very new information yeah. as far as what we know, and um, I will go into a little bit more with the MTHFR gene and some of the other stuff in just a minute, but. Does this have anything to do with like the paleo diet that I've been hearing a little bit about? And I just this week made a zucchini bread out of um, using um, almond uh, I've seen flour. A, I've seen a recipe with that. It looks yeah. really good. And it was really good. And gotcha. everybody, no one in that I had sat down on the table and no one knew that it wasn't made with flour. And everybody kept cutting themselves in pieces they went through. <laughs> and, I, and I did too, and I'm diabetic, so if anything, you know, if there's any flour in there or anything mm -hmm. like that, my carbs are going to make my sugar go up. And all day long when I got ready to go to bed at night, and I had several times, because I was just in a hurry, uh -huh. chopped myself off a piece of that and figured I'm going to be 2.30 tonight when I go to bed, I'm going to pay for this. Uh -huh. And my sugar was down to 130, wow. and that's because I used the oh. um, the uh, ground yeah. almond, ground almond and system. you can make yeah. pie crust out of uh -huh. it, and yeah. cakes and yeah, all kinds of stuff. So I'm just yeah. kind of trying to switch. Well, switch. I got a question about that. I'm sorry. Is that uh, is the almond flour have more fat? Because I it don't know. I don't well, even it on, it's almonds ground up into a flour. So well, almonds are have, fat. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so almonds probably are not going to be metabolized the same way as probably. a flour, as a wheat. I don't. It, yes, it has low carbs. Well, that, that's because it's a fat. Right? Yeah. It's considered mm -hmm. a fat. A yes. Al, a so fat. yes, but it's not a fat like bacon. bacon. It's a healthy fat. But it's, it's a fat, but it's metabolized differently. Yes. It's not metabolized like a carbohydrate. Right. But so which is why she didn't go up. Yeah. So, so somewhat, um, uh, the paleo diet, um, you know, I think every person needs to figure out what diet works about well for them. Okay. Um, I think that there are some people who do really, really well on paleo diet. I do similar because I don't do any grains. Okay, and that's primarily because of my own gut and my own family history and the celiac genes that we have. And blah 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 blah. Okay, so so that's that has to do with that. But um, I think that you know there are definitely some people who do much better on the Mediterranean diet, which does include you know whole wheat and healthy fats. Yeah. And some people do better on a low fat diet. So um, the 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 biggest thing that I think is that it had that all of these diets seem to have in common is that when they initially start off and people have really good results with them, they are mostly made from scratch. Mm -hmm. It's not until later on that you start to have all the products and all the stuff coming in boxes. Right. Okay. <coughs> so my biggest proponent is, and this is horrible for people who don't have energy, but my biggest thing is, please let's start not eating stuff out of boxes. Mm -hmm. Let's start shopping on the outside of the uh, outside of the, the grocery store where the fresh foods are, and make things from scratch. Um, and it's really not as hard as I thought it would be. <laughs> it's really not as hard as it, as I thought it would be. But anyway, um, so another another issue that you might have is if you have issues with yeast or candida infections, you may find that that goes up. Um, and you may find a mother, and they may keep coming back, so you may, you know, get rid of it, and then all of a sudden you have another issue with it. If you can't seem to get rid of the candida infection, that may be something to look into. Um, and then also if you have heavy metal or chelation problems by the doctor. The other thing that, you know, if you've tried a ton of other stuff and you feel lousy, still, this may be something to look into. 
Okay. Um, all right, so also I wanted to point out some medications that can interrupt the cycle of methylation. So alcohol can interrupt it. Um, and acids um, can deplete, de deplete your B12, which um, decreases stomach acid, which is necessary to have a certain acidity for these actions to actually occur um, for some of them. Methotrexate, which um, people take that for RA, right? For rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, so that can do it. Um, Bactrim nit nitrous oxide. So if you've got a kid going to the dentist or you go to the dentist and have the nitrous oxide because your anxiety levels are high because your serotonin and dopamine levels are low, um, you, might, uh, you, you, you might not want to have the nitrous oxide because that can interfere with the ability to... Um, Oh, it's, it happens. All right, so um, emotional stress can also create some of these issues. Um, keep in mind that when you have a problem with, um, when you have a stressor in your life, it can be psychological, it can be um, emotional, it can be physical, like chronic pain. Those can be stressors that can kick through the, the neural, immune, endocrine systems, can get them working and get that all hyped up, okay? Uh, also environmental chemicals, food additives, um, that can be a stressor that adds on to it, okay? Um, typically these aren't issues unless you've had that trigger event that makes everything go. Um, I had a, a patient this morning ask me, and I, I think that probably it's likely, um, you know, how far apart are the, is the trigger event and the actual symptoms? And probably it could be a few years, because if you look at some of these things, if, it, if you're not completely impaired in far, as far as your ability to make these methyl groups, and your diet is halfway decent, or some other things are going your way, you may not have a buildup of some of these issues until later on, and so until finally you're like, gosh, you know what, I really don't feel good. Okay, so you could probably wait a year or two between the actual trigger event and, and some of these problems. Um, the trigger event can flip on the gene that makes these, makes it difficult to complete this process, okay? Um, you have, in this process, you get the folate or the folic acid or something like that, and it, it, you have to make it into the paper airplane, okay? And basically where the problem with some of these genes is, is right at the end stages. So you have the paper airplane almost completely folded, but the wings aren't folded down. Okay, and then it won't fly. All right, or it flies, but maybe not quite as well. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, and so some people, uh, about, let's say, I think they said 40% of the population has about a 40% reduction in the ability to complete that paper airplane. Okay. Um, so that may take a little bit longer. Then there's another 20% of the population that has like an 80% reduction in the ability to do this. So that there, that particular gene just does not function really at all. You always have, the body has many redundant systems and so you always have a secondary route that you can take to get those methyl groups, okay? The problem is, is that guy, he can fold the paper airplanes but he's really slow at it. And he's really supposed to be taking the serotonin and the dopamine that's been used and recycling them back into usable serotonin and dopamine. So you may end up with low serotonin, dopamine, and symptoms like anxiety, depression, um, social anxiety, um, those kinds of things. Okay. Um, so I added um, a whole bunch of uh, pages on the back of this handout. Um, that have suggestions of foods that, that you can eat. Um, among them, the raw leafy greens. That's a really huge issue. When you cook it, it doesn't, it changes the, the, it changes the way that molecule looks. So the raw leafy greens, anything green will have this folate, folate in it. Okay. Um, the last thing you can do is you can see if there are problems, um, you can get tested. Um, and I didn't write down the, the tests that, that you can get, but um, you, can, you can get tested for things like Epstein-Barr, which I think 95% of the, the population of the United States has an Epstein-Barr or has had it at some point. Oh my um, God, what is it? Uh, mono. Oh, oh, 
I read that and I was like, oh my goodness, like that's a lot of people and not everybody has. And not everybody has all the symptoms for mono, so they don't get diagnosed with it at the time. So you can get tested for the Epstein Barr, you can get tested for, for Lyme disease. Um, and in that one, um, the Western blot test is not going to do, it's not going to show you if you've had it in the past. It's going to show you if it's an active current infection. Um, but these things can kind of hide out and cause problems later. They can rear their ugly head. If you have a, another cold or infection or something like that, it can take advantage of a, of a weak immune system. You get tested for your vitamin D levels. Um, vitamin B levels. Um, that can be a little bit misleading though because if you get tested for your vitamin B levels and they're fine in your blood, that doesn't necessarily mean that's making to the cells that you want it to. Will the docs order that? They, they yes, they, they will. They will? That's they what can. I was wondering. Which ones? I didn't know that. Which ones will they order? Yeah. Without some of them you can you can some of them you can get online. Um, they'll send you a kit okay. or something. Um, I haven't I, I happen to I happen to have a doctor a couple doctors that are real good and, and will do that. The other thing you can go to some of um, like Prexshot I think and yeah. um, Essential Wellness Pharmacies will do those some of those tests for you. Um, Life Plus MD um, will do some of those tests for you. Disclaimer uh, or disclosure, uh, Dr. Feather, Dr. Henry are part of Life Plus MD, which is, is where called? I work. What is it called? Life. Life Plus MD. What is that? Um, and that's it's a it's a group that will do a lot of blood testing and a lot of uh, work with oh. you to t determine diet, exercise, um, to try to get healthier and. Oh, that's in this office then. These it's not in this oh. office. It's down the street. Um, but you can get the same services at other places too, and I'm not so sure what the names of those. Life <laughs> is a is a store, yeah, or office. It's, yeah, it's an it's an office. Um, we have a nurse practitioner that's there. Oh. Um, that she will talk to you about your about your weight, okay. about your your body fat mm -hmm. content, uh, all of that stuff to try to mm -hmm. um, get you on the right path to to health. Okay, um, and they have lots of supplements and stuff there that are mm -hmm. that are good. Does good she fall well. under dietitian? She's a nurse practitioner, and I, I think that, I'm not sure if she's, do you know offhand if she's gotten um, board certified yet in functional medicine? I do not know. Okay, I know she's working at getting board certified in functional medicine as oh, well, which uh, for nurse practitioners, I believe is 100 hours plus passing um, board exams. Okay, so. Um, So, and then the, you can also get uh, some gene testing done, and you don't have to have a doctor for this. You can go through 23andMe, or you can go through Ancestry.com to have your um, DNA test done. Then you can take the information from, I think 23andMe actually will tell you a lot of the information, um, but Ancestry.com, you can take the raw data. They will give it to you if you paid for the test. They will give you the raw data, and you can run it through. One group is called Prometheus. Um, and that is a $5 donation, $5 cost, to um, have them run your DNA and it will tell you if you have MTHFR and a whole slew of other issues. Um, it'll tell you if you're at a higher risk for heart disease or diabetes or breast cancer or whatever. I mean, it tells you, it breaks them all down for you. Um, it's a little overwhelming because there are thousands upon thousands of genes that they test and, and give you a report on. And a lot of it, to be honest with you, I don't understand. And you know, you look at the thing and you're like, okay, so I have four genes that indicate that I have a higher risk for breast cancer, and then I have five genes that indicate that I'm at a lower risk for breast cancer. So is that, what does that mean? <laughs> is, that, is that based on your, uh, where you're from, like your Eastern Asian or your European? How are they coming up with that? They're not they're, 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 uh, oh, and I forget what it's called, or what they actual, it's called the SNPs. They call them SNPs. Oh. But they're um, little parts of your genes that they have identified as being related to um, increased risk of blood, breast cancer or increased risk of peanut allergy or... Well, what are you sending in that they do that? Oh, saliva. Oh, it's saliva. Oh, it's saliva. saliva. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't, mm -hmm. I did not understand your question. Oh, that's all right. I didn't get it. Saliva test. Um, so yeah, that's a saliva test, and then you can take the the raw data from that saliva test and throw it through the the Prometheus. And another one is called NutraHacker, which I have not run yet, and that's about I think forty dollars. 
and that'll tell you kind of what uh, supplements you may be in more need of. Wow. Okay. One thing to say about supplements in general, and that is that um, I'm a firm believer in trying to get what you need from food. Primarily because I, I really think that probably there are things, unidentified compounds and structures in food that we don't know about that help you to absorb it better and use it better. Okay. Um, I don't think that we figured out completely what all the, the supplements you need are. That said, if you feel like you might need to have a little extra, that's fine to use some supplements, but be sure that you get some that are that are good quality. That yeah, yeah and, and are have a good reputation. There are some good companies out there, but um, and the the other thing to say, there's at least one uh, one functional medicine guy out there who says, do not whatever take folic acid. If you have folic acid in your house, throw it away. Okay. I, I haven't made up my mind on whether or not I agree with that, okay, but I'm going to tell you his reasoning. And his reasoning is that if you have a methylation problem and your body does not tr convert the folic acid into methylfolate well, you're overloading the one backup system that you have and thus are going to put yourself kind of further behind the eight ball. So remember that guy that can make the paper airplanes, but he's very, very slow, and he really should be working on your serotonin and dopamine? Okay, so you're overloading that guy if you're taking the, meth or the folic acid. So what he says to do is try to find a source of methylfolate. Easier said than done. Okay, because I guarantee you that you go home and you look at your loaf of bread, it's going to tell you that it's got folic acid in it. Mm -hmm. Okay, all of our foods that are that are enriched, all of our, you know, the protein bars, all of your meal bars, all of your meal supplements, all of that stuff has folic acid in it. So, good, bad, I don't know. That's but because at it's, least it's more stable. Uh, it could be. It you know your methyl group is real reactive in the body. It does four or five good different point. things. Okay, good point. if it's. Um, you know, if you've got a methylfolate uh -huh. or, you know, another methylfolate something, um, it's going to be less stable. So you're going to have to really watch like an expiration date and mm -hmm. go from a good company uh, because it's just, you know, it may revert back to a folic acid or something else that may even be toxic mm -hmm. in that bottle before you take it. Good so that, that's Very why good. most of them, any additive is going to be folic acid, okay. or most of them anyway. Good. Good to know. Um, yeah, so that's I another reason why I like, you know, just, just eat the leafy greens. Can you, uh, what's the best raw leafy green that's tolerable? Is that like a spinach? I, I would say the baby spinach probably. That's what I, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I like the baby spinach and I like, um, you know, any of the darker, the darker the green the better. Mm -hmm. Um, so some of the, like the 50-50 mix that you can get at the grocery store is pretty decent. Um, spring mix, you know, it's, it's got some of the, some of the other, I can't even remember all the, the names of the different I kinds like the of. Purple, <laughs> the purple stuff that's in like the mix of, you know, the baby mix. Yeah, I don't know. Does that, have, stuff? does that have the full you know, purple lettuce? I don't know. That's what I like. That's my favorite. I wish I had a bag of that. <laughs> that's good. We'll plant some. Uh, Put some, get it out of your own garden. I don't know what it is. How do they do well, it? Google that. There's a uh, what is there's supposed to be purple stuff, liver, but it's not a leafy it, raw. Yeah, it's not a yeah, green. I see. Uh, oh, I don't know if you're on the but green too. It does limit you. Well, it, yeah. it does limit well, you a lot. Yeah. 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 yeah, so you do have to watch, you know. If you're on a medication like warfarin, you do have to watch, make sure that you're not outside the diet required for that, so that you're not going to bleed out. Cruciferous vegetables. Cruciferous. Yes. I have a question too. Yeah. Like for potatoes, 
-hmm. You wouldn't eat those raw. Like, does it lose the nutrients if you cook them? Because I know, like, for the spinach, I'm right out of I eat potatoes raw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? I don't know. That's a good question. I would assume that well, it's probably okay if you cook those. Like, it, you, so for the spinach, the dark leafy greens, you should eat them raw because if you cook them, that takes the a lot of the nutrients out. But what about, like, potatoes? Well, like, I've never eaten a raw potato. I know it wouldn't kill well, me. They're good. We, uh, they yeah, they're yummy. Food. Well, like they are different. They give you one. In Europe, we say at least steam. What? Steam. My grandma's saying they give you one. Yeah, I steam them. I steam them. Steam everything. Container. Very lightly. Is that what you do? The greens. No, no, no. That would be cooked. That would be cooked. That would be cooked. And I mean, it, some some of it depends on, and I didn't I didn't give yeah. myself a copy of that, but yeah. and some of it depends on what nutrient exactly that you're looking for. Right. Um, and you may have to, if you have questions about, you know, that. If, I mean, I'm assuming, you know, beans. Of course, you're going to cook those. Mm -hmm. I I would. <laughs> you can buy them already cooked. <laughs> yes, you can. Yes, you can. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So wow, that was really. Heavy. That was a lot of heavy yeah, information. Um, Interesting. I, I think really, um, uh, encourage our mind to follow up on things, <laughs> unless you give us a second lecture like this. <laughs> I don't know. This one kind of put me out. I might have to go back to something simple next time. <laughs> What is like a book that gives you, you know, what do you, if you want to find out about all this stuff? I mean, you know, what's a um, book that you read? A that? book. I'm not sure that I've come across a so book yet many. about this whole B vitamin methyl folate stuff. Um, I would say that uh, there, there are some decent podcasts. Um, Underground Wellness has some really good podcasts. Uh, he, the, that was the first one that I listened to that I went, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And like, se seriously, all the way to work. I'm listening to this on the way to work and I'm like, oh, no way! You're kidding! I mean, the whole thing, I mean, like, anybody watching me? <laughs> like, <laughs> what's going on with her? <laughs> uh, so that one, that one, uh, Underground something? Underground Wellness. Okay. Can you do that on the computer? And, uh, yes. Yeah. And he, and he has one on the MTHFR made easy. And that's what is one that that's MTHR? called MTHFR is the gene oh, that gene. has to do with the the methylation process. Oh. Um, and then there's another one, um, neuroimmune, I think is in the title um, for for the those two podcasts that have that are related that I know that are on underground wellness. Um, and then if you if you look up online you can find some you know if you put in methylation or you know methylfolate or something along those lines you can find some um, the, the danger with that of course is that not everybody that's writing a blog about it actually knows what they're talking about right so what I tend to do is I, I cross check so uh, like I said with with the 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 list that I gave you she asked me if is this the website that you went to yes the information that I read on that website matched up with the information that I read on other websites and, and that I read with other, other information. Uh, but I didn't get anything out of an actual book this time. Um, you have listed on there under the ones that medications that can interrupt methylation and it's metformin. And of course, that's a, I take metformin. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I would encourage you to look at getting that, if that, get it, those nutrients from your food, um, if you can, without messing up with forbearing or something else. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and and you know you can talk to your doctor if you feel like you know if you've had if you have the MTHFR gene, um, and you can talk to them about different supplements. And so and I know that they're not they, there's not a complete protocol. On some of these supplements yet, and how much you need to take, or how often, or if you take the B12 at the same time you take the B9, or if you, you know, on and on. I'm not sure that we have all of that figured out yet. And the doctor is so. not going to know. The doctor is not going to know, and so you're going <laughs> to, yeah. because it all is all really new stuff. Um, my doctor only cares about my A1C. 
<laughs> you give yeah. him medicine, and if that A1C is good, then everything stays the same. <laughs> now, another note on the kind of a historical thing on vitamin D, you know, it's kind of brought up that, um, you know, a lot of the supplements are low, the RDA is 400, and, and um, this was probably 30 to 40 years ago. U.S. Vitamin made a couple of products. One was uh, they were water soluble A and water soluble D. The D was in 25,000 units and then 50,000 units. And you know, we went through the vitamin craze where everybody mm -hmm. was yeah, nuts right. over vitamins, you know, kind of like we do now. And then, uh, <laughs> <Go through cycles>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, there was a lot of I think it was brain toxicity in like teenagers and kids because they were taking a lot of the 50,000 units. Oh wow. Um, so that's when... But it was water soluble. <clears throat> yeah, it was water soluble for absorption. Right. But the body's going to store A, D, E, and K. I know because it's fat soluble. Yeah. It, it's going to revert so back. The, the only thing, when you make it water soluble, all they do is they kind of make it more like water miscible. It's kind of like you add a little bit of Dawn detergent to your vinegar and oil. Yeah. Uh, it uh -huh. looks like it goes in, and it kind of does, kind of okay. in solution. But uh -huh. when it's absorbed, it's going to go back to that vitamin D. Okay. It's the moral of the story. You can get too you much. You can get too much. Yeah, yeah. So that's when everybody cut the supplements down to about 3,000 or 5,000. Now and, yeah. they're starting to creep back up again. There's Plus like an eight and a, maybe a <laughs> ten or so, yeah. and uh, uh, so because everybody's level or a lot of people's level uh -huh. was thirty and yeah. below. Yeah. So that's interesting. So that's yeah. kind of so yeah. you know, beware. Yeah. What did you do? Oh, pharmacy.